So the PFA Team of the Year then, we have Edison in goal, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Virgil van Dijk, Laporte, Andrew Robertson, Pogba, Silva, Fernandinho, Aguero, Sterling and Mane. Now your teams, uh, there's a little bit of difference players that you've picked but we should start at the back because we have two versus two two Allisons two Edisons why did you go for um, well, I wouldn't have argued either way to be honest because my mind was 50 50 up until the weekend um, and Edison made four incredible one-on-one -on -one saves against Tottenham and that sort of tipped it his his way um, if uh, Alison had made five or six fantastic <laughs> saves, then <laughs> might have gone the other way. I so just think so oh, they both have had uh, have made such a, a huge difference to their teams. Well, Melissa, I'm going to come to you next because you've gone Alison, and clearly Alan's swayed by a great weekend. You were absolutely incandescent, and you've got—I can't believe you've gone for Edison. So why did you so strongly stick with Alison? For me, the confidence he has given that team. Liverpool used to have this self-fulfilling prophecy where they always felt they were going to concede. And he's been a big part in reversing that. Uh, his playing style as well just allows Liverpool to win in a variety of ways, which is something they haven't done before because they can now rely on a steely foundation. They don't always have to go all out blitz. Edison is exceptional. But I do not think a goalkeeper's had a bigger impact as he has. And yet you're sticking with Edison. I don't think there's a lot in it. I think they're, you know, even in their, their national size, they're you know, buying to top spot in there. Um, i just given it to Edison. They're both very good footballers with the ball, but I think Edison's, Edison's could play in midfield, probably for Manchester City as well. He's so good. I'm, I'm not sort of with Alan. You can, you can argue the case for either. Um, if, I, if I were a Liverpool fan, I might have gone for Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, you're not a Liverpool fan. Well, you may be a closet Liverpool fan. No. <laughs> They're expressed that, but you have gone for Alisson. Yeah, I, I, I have gone for Alisson because he's just made such a big difference compared to last year. He has been there with, with the big saves, the big moments. He, he, has, he has been there. Mm -hmm. They've got only 20 goals against this year. Yes, there's three more, more matches, but... 20 goals, mm. you know, conceded. Uh, he's not the best with the ball at his feet, not as good as, as Edison, mm. but I like a keeper to be a goalkeeper, to catch balls, to make saves, and he does that. Right back. Two for TAA and two for AWB. Uh, when did acronyms become such a thing <laughs> in, um, in right backs? <laughs> but, um, and double barreled names as well in football. Um, obviously, the PFA. <laughs> have gone for TAA. You've gone for Bissaka, haven't you? I've gone for Aaron Wan Bissaka, yeah. Um, I think his improvement has been incredible. I think the pressure that a young player is under is, is hard enough anyway, but to go into a team and stand out when they're, for, for a lot of this season, he's been playing in a relegation battle. Mm. Um, so when you put all that together, for him, I think, to be the standout player in that team, what they've had to go through uh, and keep and getting better and better and offers so much to that team and play so many games in the season, not many injuries. Um, I think he deserves it. I think he's been absolutely magnificent. He has come out of nowhere. Mm. And then I judge him when he plays against a Hazard and he stood his own. That says a lot and he's still, as you said, He's still improving and he's still getting stronger and he's still getting better. He's so athletic. Mm. Nobody gets past him. Trent, though, for you? Um, yeah, I, I, purely because I think he's um, a better footballer. And um, I, he's certainly a fullback I would love to play with if, in my day. In the modern era, the modern fullback has to be really good going forward. And I think he's very special, Trent. I think he's got. His passing range is as, as good as any midfield player, and he'll probably end up in midfield. I was just about to say, do you think he'll end up? I think he will. I think he's too good to be a fullback. <laughs> I just think he's just the most exciting young footballer that I think we've got around. Of all the brilliant talent we've got, I'll be surprised if any of them end up better than him. The expectation and the pressure that's on him as a local lad, with Liverpool so desperate to end their title drought, and the composure in which he handles it is excellent. It's actually odd you don't think of him as a 20-year-old because mm -hmm. he plays with such maturity. Mm -hmm. You actually have to convince yourself 
he's his actual age. OK, well, the uh, PFA agree with you two. Um, and the PFA <laughs> also agree with most of you when it comes to the centre-backs, uh, with Virgil van Dijk and Laporte uh, taking those two positions. However, <laughs> we have one uh, flyer, if you like. Uh, Melissa, and it'll please you, Alan. Uh, you have gone for Newcastle United's Fabian Scher. Yeah, I... Obviously, Laporte is an excellent defender. He's one of the obvious names when you're picking through and you're choosing. Then I thought, would City still be sort of where they are without him? And I thought, yeah. Would Newcastle be in the same position without Shah? Absolutely not. They concede less than a goal a game when he's in the squad, considerably more when he's missing. Uh, he scores some absolute scorches mm. as well. Can't believe you not picked. Him. Did you? Did you? <laughs> well, I did. I did. <laughs> no, I thought it was a very, very good pick from Melissa. He's never let anyone down. He's been solid as, and he has scored a couple of, of vital goals. But for um, for team of the year, then I don't think you can get away from Van Dijk and, and Laporte. So uh, potentially next year's. PFA uh, team of the year then, <laughs> uh, but not this one. Uh, let's, <laughs> there is a unanimity uh, then on uh, left back for Robertson. We, we had Wrighty and we were doing a match of the day yeah. one day and it was, <laughs> it was when Robertson was very young. He said to us, I really love this, this Robertson, I really love him. And, um, and for the rest of the game, he had an absolute nightmare. <laughs> we were hammering right. <laughs> always we were always happens. We were giving him so much stick. And now, every, right, every time, time, every time he plays, I told you, I told you, I told you he was good. <laughs> but he's class. He's, uh, he is, so, he really Well, that sums up the defence. And interestingly, yeah. three out of the four from the PFA team are Liverpool players. Understandably so. Let's move on to the midfield. And three out of the four of you have gone for Fernandinho. Uh, and the PFA have gone for Fernandinho. However, there's a flyer in Wijnaldum. Mr. Consistent, that's what he is. He offers, he offers a bit of, uh, bit of everything, a bit of solidity. He's a leader in his own right in that midfield also. And without having too many great reports, and we often talk about Salah and Mane and um, Van Dijk and the goalkeeper, not many people mention Wijnaldum. And if you look at their performances and their stats, he won't be too far away every single week. I do agree that Wijnaldum is the most important midfielder for Liverpool. I don't think that he deserves to be in the best team of, 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 of the season. Uh, I know him really well, Wijnaldum, and I know the kind of work that he does. And I know what you're saying. He deserves to be in the team of the season more than one person in that fair fair team of the season. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, no That's for sure. That, that, that I agree on. Yes. You brought the elephant in the room up, so let's mention Paul Pogba, who's on the PFA. How, how do you know who's talking about Paul Pogba? <laughs> <laughs> that made you make that assumption. Pogba is in the PFA team of the year. None of you have gone for Pogba, and when you saw the list, you were all incredulous individually. It was quite interesting watching all your reactions. Um, why do you think he's in? I mean, he's a beautiful footballer, there's no question about that. And he's a World Cup winner and he's, um, he's got a lot of qualities and on, in certain performances this season, he's been exceptional. Um, I don't think he deserves to get in the team of the year because I think his, his form has been erratic. Mm. Um, certainly uh, the Mourinho part of the season where they obviously didn't get on, didn't see eye to eye. Um, he, you know, his game was nowhere near at the levels mm. that it was certainly when um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer took over for a while. Um, he's not been consistent enough to be in the team of the year for me. It, look, he's got ability, as you oh, said. He's, yeah. he's magnificent yeah. uh, as, a, as an individual. But I don't think that he deserves to be even close to, to this team. Well, the PFA have gone for Bernardo Silva as well, and three of the yeah. four of you have gone. Yeah, it was, it was a difficult one, because you're trying to get so many players in that you did one yeah. of the team. So I think we've all gone with a, quite an attacking midfield, <laughs> shall yeah. we say. One of you didn't go for Bernardo Silva. Oh. You want to be up for a, a much more defensive midfielder? Yeah. You're Declan a striker, Rice. man. What's I, I, I am, I am. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but this boy has just caught my eye. He's playing so mature. He's 20 years old, playing in a really important position. He does it really simply. Mm. He gets the ball, plays really simple. That Another good well young English player. As of a few <laughs> months ago. Uh, <laughs> Let's just give a little bit more time, though, to Bernardo Silva and his attributes and why he is on the list. Came in as, as a wide player, playing now in, in midfield, so much energy, um, taps in with goals, but not good enough to be in my team. <laughs> <laughs> Pep 
the other one's face, you just head right yeah. you. <laughs> guys, no, guys. Because, because I've got so many to choose it's from. Difficult. And, and, it's and, and, and it is difficult. And, and we will be judged by those that we leave out. <laughs> exactly. <Yes. laughs> you know? but, but yeah. Chelsea fans will be happy with all of you because you've all gone for Eden Hazard yeah. and the PFA haven't. Um, is that a surprise to you? Yeah, it, yeah. it does. <laughs> because if, we, if you're talking about what a player. the importance of an individual to a team... Mm. Even then when they're playing that, well. that Chelsea team would be nothing without him. I mean, if, if they don't have Hazard next year, if, with the transfer mm. ban maybe possibly, uh, and he goes to, uh, to, to another team, Madrid, then I would fear for Chelsea because he, he has been Chelsea, I think, this season. When, when you judge players and how good they are, the element of joy that they bring to mm. the game is very important. Um, he's kind of probably the closest to... Messy in style, low, mm. strong, turns people really quickly, electric bursts of pace. Unpredictable. Um, but yeah, it'd be so tough to play against, but I love watching him play. And, it, and that's, what, that's what ultimately football's about, mm. watching the players that bring joy to you. If you put him in a Liverpool team, mm. now, this Liverpool team, what kind of damage do you think that he would be able to do? Would he be doing more than Salah and, and Mane? I don't think so. Yeah. OK, shall we move on to the forwards? Yeah. Uh, all four of you have gone with Sterling and Aguero. Mm. Gary, you're the only person to go for Mo Salah mm. over Mane. Yeah, his numbers are slightly better. So I looked over the whole season rather than perhaps from January to March. Mm. And I think he just edges um, Mane. Had to have Sterling and Aguero in. It was really tight between Mane and <laughs> Salah, but I just thought... We'll, we'll go discuss Sterling and Aguero in greater length a little bit later on. Uh, but you've done it again, Melissa, you know, appealing to the, uh, to the panel with your kind of uh, slightly left field. Well, not left field at all. He deserves to be there, I'm, I'm sure, in yeah. your list. But you're the only one that's gone for some. Yeah, he is an absolute marvel of a player. I think Pochettino called him a battery. Just goes and goes and goes until there's absolutely nothing left to him. And for me, he is the snapshot, the frame of Pochettino Spurs, if you were to use one player to describe what Tottenham under Maurizio is like, I think it's him. Uh, oh, guys, you can see, uh, I think we spent uh, a good five hours there discussing yeah. <laughs> that, and um, a management uh, by committee perhaps isn't the best solution. Um, but thank you so much for all your arguments there. Let's move on, though, to talk about the youngsters who've lit up the Premier League this season. So here is the shortlist for the young PFA Player of the Year. The criteria is the player must be 23 years or under at the start of the season. Sterling, Silva, Rashford, Alexander-Arnold, Rice and Brooks. Now remember, it's possible for a player to win both this award and the main award. One of the things that um, I think we all have perhaps an agreement on, the age limit for this award seems to be quite high. That's ridiculous. 24-year-old, you can win... Um... Young Player of the Year mm -hmm. award. That for me has to change. Yeah. They have to bring that age 21. Down to 21. Mm -hmm. yeah. 22 maximum. Yeah. But yeah. Especially the amount of 24 and winning a young prodigious player of the talent year award. that coming through. Well, at the age of 24, you could have had two huge transfers already in your life, couldn't you? And yeah. played in Champions yeah. League for four years. You talked about Declan Rice. You might want to make a case for him for this award. I'm, I'm guessing. Yeah. Look, if you're going to put Sterling in, it's going to be, uh, and, and Bernardo Silva, it's going to be difficult for Declan Rice. But it should be about those kind of players. Or a Wan Bissaka. And, and a Wan Bissaka. Who's yeah. not even I'm on the list. He's not on the list. It's yeah. absolutely staggering. So is that he's Ian Wright. He's already tweeted his list <laughs> that he's not on this it, list. Well, Ian Wright's not on the list. <laughs> <laughs> he's only just he's marginally aging well. older than Bernardo Silva. But, I mean, Sterling's played in two World Cups. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. But Wan Bissaka hasn't. And that is, I think, uh, yeah. perhaps... Yeah, I think common market. sense, regardless of what the age criteria is, should be applied. It should be young yeah. in your career. I mean, Raheem Sterling was first nominated for Young Player in 2013-14. He cost £49 million. Bernardo Silva cost £43.5 million. Pounds. Even the likes of James Madison, Ruben Neves, all players who have a stronger case, I think, mm, yeah. to be in this list. Um, it's not their this. fault. It, it's no. not their fault. No, 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 but no, 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 it's, it's not it's, their yeah. fault. But it's the, uh, we need to limit the amount of years they could have played. Yeah. So, so we're going to discard those discard two. Discard them for now, for our debate. They'll, be in the main um, they'll probably, one of them will win it. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk about David Brooks, for example. He's been a breath of fresh air for, for Bournemouth. He's playing really freely. 
but you have to give credit to, to his manager as well, to give him that platform of, of playing. And he's taking that and he is opening the fences off, creating. It's nice to see mm -hmm. these young players getting an opportunity and, and, and holding them up their own. He won the Welsh Player of the Year and Young Player of the Year this mm. year, which no other player, no Ryan Giggs, no Gareth Bale has ever done, uh, which shows you the esteem mm. that he is he's held in. Declan Rice, you've talked about what, what he has to offer and yeah. uh, for you, he's, you know, certainly I would imagine a contender on Pe that. Pellegrini is putting a lot of trust in, in him. He's playing that position really well. He's played 31 matches. When you hear him speak, he's, he's very humble, and I like that in, 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 mm. in young footballers. Trent Alexander-Arnold is on this. Is he uh, somebody yeah, he's surprised to see win it on Sunday? Would you imagine he'd be up there in the... Uh... Yeah, he, and deservedly so, he should be on the, uh, on the list. I mean, we, we, we spoke about him earlier. He's been magnificent, what he's, what he's done at, uh, at, at Liverpool. He looks an old head. He looks so, so experienced already. <laughs> of course, he's in a team that's doing brilliantly, and that helps, doesn't it? But Marcus Rashford, we probably all agree, he came on from that World Cup and really took that confidence that he got of being part of that summer into a Man United team that struggled I think this season. next season's a big season for Marcus Rashford. He's got to, to just to move on from the obviously Another. enormous potential that he has. And, um, Did you not see a step up this season? I, th I think it's been a difficult season for everyone at Manchester United. I think that obviously the Mourinho fit didn't work. Mourinho didn't really have that much trust in him. Oh. So I think it's been a kind of stagnant season for him in many ways. But I see it. I see season. a talent there, and there's a lot. Of, and but next season is very important for what, him. What is going to be important for Rashford is that the manager trust him, but going to play him in one position. I'm just about to say yeah. that. Well, that's what Oli Not on the right, the not on the left, yeah. or, or if they're going to play him on the left or right, leave, him, yeah. leave him on the left. Yeah. If you're going to use him as a striker, use him as a striker and give him the whole season. Mm. I think he's a striker, mm. and he needs to play as a striker. Is there anybody, any big glaring omission for you, Alan? Just you... one Bissaka. Yeah. I've put him in my, uh, in my team of the season, so I cannot understand how he's, yeah. uh, how he's not on that list. I'd have said Nevers or Madison probably, if, if you know, if you had the age limits in a, mm. a more perhaps sensible place, um, they would have um, sneaked in. OK, so give me your young player of the year then. Uh, for me, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Uh, one Bissaka. <laughs> Alexander-Arnold. One Bissaka. Nicely divided. <laughs> well, we've got more chance than you have been right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely have. Definitely have. <laughs> Let's discuss who our panel thinks should be crowned this season's Player of the Year. So here's a reminder of that all-important shortlist. Five out of six of the players play for the current top two in the Premier League. Van Dijk, Hazard, Mane, Aguero, Silva and Sterling. First of all, any glaring omissions for you? Son. Salah. Yeah. Son and Salah are unlucky to miss out, I would say. Who would you kick off then? Yeah. I don't know. That's a difficult <laughs> thing. It's yeah. been a season, and, and you've got to remember, we've had two teams this season. They're going to be in 90-odd points and, mm. and not win a title, one of those two mm. teams. So you've got two absolutely exceptional sides. What you've got to do is applaud Hazard for getting in it. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. it's yes. being in a team that are yeah. nowhere near as strong as either City or Liverpool. I don't think that Son deserves to be in, 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 in the top six and um, Salah has not reached the levels of, of last year. Not and far I, off though. Uh, not far off, but I think he has struggled in that period where he didn't get a lot of goals. He was still and influencing was games it. without the goals. Well, though. was he? He, he was. was. He was forcing it a little bit too much. He was trying too hard. OK, so let's talk about the six there and who for you perhaps has had the biggest influence on their team. Oof. Virgil van Dijk. When they signed him, Liverpool called him a transformer. They actually thought at the time that £75 million would be a bargain. They wanted a centre-back who'd be aerially dominant, help them sort out their issues from defending set pieces. But he needed to be able to fit into Klopp's blueprint of, you know, you have to be quite aggressive and assertive when you're in possession. He has completely changed Liverpool. I think you're spot on. I always look at defenders who have, which striker has given them the runaround. There always has to be one. There always will be one. But there isn't none. He's made two mistakes this year. The penalty against Man City and against Fulham. That was it. He has been exceptional. Exceptional, exceptional. And for me, it is so difficult 
to choose. We spoke about Alison earlier, and he's been um, influential as well, but Virgil van Dijk is the one. You, you cannot argue against Virgil van Dijk. Can you argue against Virgil um, van Dijk? Well, I, uh, it was very close for me. I was umming and ahhing about van Dijk or Sterling. I think they're that's, two standards. I think every two horse race, I think it's it? a two horse race. For me, I think Van Dyke's um, everything Melissa said he is. Um, I think he's made a massive difference to Liverpool. There are two reasons why I went with Sterling. Van Dyke didn't have the disadvantage, which sounds a strange thing to say, of playing in a World Cup, which is exhausting and very difficult the following season. What Sterling has done post World Cup, especially having had a bit of stick during the World mm. Cup, I think is nothing short of remarkable. And also, it's easy to be a defender and stop things. Oh, I, I, create. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, I find it very difficult <laughs> <laughs> to go for a centre half. However, we influential are a little bit loaded in that department on this panel, aren't we? Um, yes. so, yeah, yeah, we should have got a defender. Be unfair, but I always think you look at, looking at Manchester City and that incredible plethora of talent mm. they've got there and the squad and the bench you see in certain games, and he rotates and he rotates. But he's go-to yeah. player. This season, which yeah. is extraordinary considering the talent they've got, is Raheem Sterling. I think the one criticism we could have of him um, a couple of years ago is that yeah. his finishing, finishing and his ball striking, but that has improved massively. Mm. And his, his positioning on a pitch in terms of when balls are now coming into that six yard, yard area Tactically. Yeah. has to be yeah. great cr credit given to his manager um, for coaching. There's another facet isn't there to his season and that's what's gone on off the pitch I mean I, 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 I think what he's done off the pitch the certainly in terms of his standing up to racism etc mm. I think he's While it's performing on the pitch and there, important well. and he's become a real role model mm. Um, for football in this country, but and that hasn't I credit to from his performance. Often, people when they get embroiled in things exactly, that happen off the he's pitch. Put, in some ways, you could say, mm, "Are you putting that extra pressure on yourself?" Brave as though it but, was, but he's he's but, revelled in it. If anything, it seems yeah. to have given him a, a, mm. a maturity. It was so personal, the criticism against him. And as a young player, I know we said he's not young enough for that list, but he is still he's, yeah, he's young, still you know. You've got yeah. sons that are uh, are older he's, than him. Oh, he's, all right, he's Melissa. Used <laughs> 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 he's, he's, used loads of <laughs> he's, he's used that as a, as a motive. He's used mm -hmm. that. To, to get, in a way, angry, but not show that anger mm. on, on the pitch and, yeah. and use that to perform. And he's done that exceptionally well. There seems to be this storyline about him now that uh, he's a much better person now and, and a much better player now. There's no new Raheem Sterling. This has been Raheem Sterling. <laughs> and the only thing for me, what separates the two of them is, has Sterling been the reason why Manchester City are title contenders? The ultimate reason. My answer is no. Is Virgil van Dijk the ultimate reason why Liverpool are title contenders? Yes. You so said the goalkeeper was. <laughs> <laughs> but he's part of it. Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate. But he's not on the shortlist. It is a team, <laughs> so I don't think I need to ask you, Melissa, who is your player of the van year, Dijk. but I will. Alan? You still not made your mind up. <laughs> um, well, it's, it's between. I mean, there's, <laughs> Raheem Sterling, because of the goals and because of the assists, his numbers are far, far improved and will get better keep uh, next season, I'm sure. Two great players, but. two great seasons. <laughs> Raheem Sterling for me, just, just. I've struggled, I've struggled with this decision. This morning when I got out of bed, it was Van Dijk. <laughs> <laughs> then when I, when, I, when I was in the car, it was Sterling. But I have to, I, I have to go with the attacker because I'm, I'm an attacker and I just appreciate what, what he has done. I have to go for Sterling. It's just a shame in, in, in a way that he couldn't wait to the end of the season yeah. because of this tighter race. Because it, you know, one could... It could be know, the final day. It could be the final day that, you know, Sterling scores a couple or exactly. Van Dijk does something incredible yeah. and it would just influence you. But hey, it's what Let's it is. Let's hope that after this debate, you know, it doesn't turn out to be Hazard on Sunday when you clearly <laughs> brought it down to a two-horse race. Hey, because Hazard, uh, Hazard. It's definitely a two-horse race. imagine? <laughs> Uh, guys, thank you so, so much. Um, that was uh, brilliant. Very, very entertaining. And uh, let's see uh, who's right on Sunday.